150 freight cars per hour. That's an average. At peak periods, the number is considerably more. The volume of freight passing through the Mannheim marshalling yard is huge. And the reason? The yard holds a central position within the Rhine Alpine corridor. It connects the ports of Rotterdam and Antwerp with the Mediterranean basin at Genoa. 70 million people live within its catchment area. Important economic centers lie along its route. Carrying one trillion tons of freight per year, the Rhine-Alpine corridor is the most heavily used goods transport route in Europe. First of all, a whole range of issues must be clarified for everyone involved. We need to raise awareness because for the um, population, for the citizens, it's important that their place where they live becomes a better place. So we have to look also at uh, environmental issues and other issues which uh, are really related to the everyday life. The challenges are many and varied. The volume of freight is increasing all the time, while the corridor has bottlenecks. Up until a few years ago, the regional and local authorities had no part in planning and decision-making, and initially, even a common cross-border strategy did not exist. This was the starting point for the transnational project Code 24, launched in 2010. The primary objective was to expand transport capacity while minimizing environmental damage. The project began by focusing on the European Transport Corridor No. 24, hence the name. With the reorganization of the corridors in 2013 by the European Commission, Transport Corridor 24 became the Rhine-Alpine Corridor. In the course of the project, the corridor was subjected to a complete analysis. One example, a train heading south from the Mannheim marshalling yard joins the Rhine Valley Railway at Karlsruhe. The stretch between Karlsruhe and Basel is one of the most severe bottlenecks in the corridor. Here, local freight and long-distance trains all have to share two tracks. Statistics show that at times, this part of the corridor is already totally overloaded. The noise levels caused by rail traffic are not just a problem in the Rhine Valley. A livable corridor needs to allocate living and recreation space alongside infrastructure. We have to reduce the impacts from traffic. That's an essential objective of the EGTC strategy. This can happen, for example, by retrofitting the rolling stock, banish noisy wagons, noise differentiating track access charges. That means more noise, higher fee. There is not just one solution. The corridor countries have to work with a mix of strategies in order to reduce the noise and to boost the rail traffic. The bottlenecks, along with all other relevant data, are filed in the corridor information system. This serves as a planning tool, which allows any part of the corridor to be displayed and the local situation evaluated. The aim was to work out a strategy for further development. Deciding on the bottom-up approach right from the start was a major factor in ensuring success. Partners set up a network to better represent their interests in Berlin and Brussels. After five years, the partners of the Code24 project presented a common strategy for further development. One corridor, one strategy. But it was clear to all participants that the time allotted for the project would not suffice to resolve all the challenges, all the problems. 2015 marked the start of the European Grouping of Territorial Cooperation, the Interregional Alliance for the Rhine-Alpine Corridor, EGTC. This body will further develop the strategic initiative of Code 24 to ensure a long-term partnership and cooperation beyond the time limits of the Interreg project term. We depend on each other. We share a common destiny, and not just along the Rhine, but in this whole trans-European corridor. That's why it's so important that all the stakeholders are on board with all their knowledge and at the end throwing their political weight onto the balance. The importance of a functioning infrastructure is shown by the construction site mishap at Rastatt in 2017. This led to the closure of the Rhine Valley lines, causing huge problems for goods and passenger traffic. However, this is not the only reason for improvement. The now operational Gotthard base tunnel is a step forward, but of course only in Switzerland. 
It has no effect on the problems of the Rhine Valley Railway or the bottleneck of the Dutch-German border. That's why transnational planning of transport routes and infrastructure projects is so important. We think some things could be handled more efficiently, for instance loads. Some freight carriers return empty or only half full. That's not what we want, whether by rail or by water, ensuring a full load, both there and back, is efficiently doable with intelligent IT technology. The capacity of the corridor must be increased, but not necessarily by building new sections. It's evident that the trains are not always optimally loaded. An online exchange for rail freight services is an excellent example of how to tackle this problem. Capacity can also be increased by the use of waterways. The ports of Mannheim and Strasbourg could further develop multimodal logistics centers. Increasing the corridor's capacity plays an important part in our work. This means investing in the infrastructure, rail, air, road and waterways. And there must be further implementation of multimodality. Then, an intelligent infrastructure will make it possible to plan new investment. Right from the start, a key factor in this success story was the bottom-up approach, the organizational form of the European Grouping of Territorial Cooperation, has united the regional and local authorities within a single common framework. This ensures that the municipalities and regions in the Rhine-Alpine corridor are able to influence future developments for their own benefit, very much in keeping with the theme, one corridor, one strategy.